This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. Up here in the attic. Come at it, went off. There's nothing to watch. <laughs> Come, Nick. Everything's 3D Hollywood today. I remember back when I was, I was your age, you used to just uh, get our old TV sets, no satellite hookups or anything, just took our signals out of the air. But wasn't that dangerous? Well, that was, of course, uh, before the uh, Surgeon General found a link between uh, TV signals and cancer. That was before your time. Remember some old 2D shows, though? Uh, some were even in black and white. Wow! Of course, that was uh, before President Turner put that enforced colorization law through in the 20s. Our show's must have been really boring. They weren't even interactive. Well, uh, don't be so sure about that. There were some great shows back then. Oh, wait a minute. Let me look at this. Mm. Ooh, what? what's that? Oh, it's called a VCR. <laughs> Uh, see, back before all the video was put directly into computer memory in the com net, people used to tape shows. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, there's, there's a tape already in here. Let me let me hook this up here. Let me see what we got. Uh, oh, ooh, oh, damn radiation. <laughs> Come back with us to the 60s and 70s, the dwelling place of the lost generation. An era whose heroes, role models, and very lives were molded and formed by weekly installments of favorite television programs. Welcome to the place your parents didn't understand. Welcome to the vast wasteland. Welcome, Welcome home. home. Welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. I'm your host, Mark Schmidbauer, along with Wilbur Neal and Marty Wiley, and we're here to talk about 60s and 70s television. Before we jump into today's exciting episode, just want to tell you we're on uh, Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 10, and Thursdays at 3 here on ACTV Cable 21. Also, uh, for some reason, if you want to write into us, our box number is 1515 Columbus, Ohio, 43215. Well, this week on Vast Wasteland, something very exciting. It's our first uh, actors retrospective show, and we couldn't be more happy and pleased. Ooh. And uh, uh, for our first actors retrospective, certainly a, a guiding force, one of the hardest working men in 60s and 70s television, Bill Bixby. Hey, Bill! Bill! Oh, Bill! Bill! And yes, Bill Bixby today on Vast <coughs> Wasteland. Certainly a man of many talents and uh, and on and many credits and lots of shows and we're gonna go through them uh, starting uh, with uh, certainly his 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 uh, first starring role. Let's uh, let's talk about that, Wilbur. Well, let me let me just go back here a little bit. Now, Bill's um, first big break in Hollywood wasn't quite what he expected because he was working. He was a struggling young actor in the 50s. Mm -hmm. like say then he was um, working part time as a lifeguard and a uh, a Detroit auto executive recruited him to travel the Midwest for his first screen roles in some industrial films. And so then he went on from there and he did some, um, went on to the West Coast from there and he did some small parts and he did um, some small parts in things like The Many, lives, the many Loves of 
Dobie Gillis. But even mm -hmm. before that, he <coughs> an actual regular from 1952 to 1960 on a game show called Masquerade Party. Ooh. He was listed as a regular panelist for that for that show. No, but but according to my information, he was on he was on the 1975 version of that show. And not and not the 1950s oh, no, the version. version. I had said he was in the 50s version. Well, let's let's check there. Uh, check. Let's check. Uh, let's well, actually, see. wasn't his first starring role actually on uh, Joey Bishop? That's, That's right. true. In January of '62, he landed his first continuing role as Joey Bishop's boss on the Joey Bishop Show. He replaced another actor who was fired in the middle of the season. And his big break, his first of three hit series, came the following year as a reporter on. My favorite Martian. But, but there is a sad note. Yeah. But there is a sad note. In 1980, all the copies were destroyed. Yeah, I read that. Joey Bishop requested <laughs> this was all copies. Really a bad show. So we've got some, we've got some lost footage of Bill. The Bernie. loss of Bixby tapes. Yeah, that's sad. <laughs> but yes, my favorite Martian is probably the first big hit that everybody recognizes. <laughs> <from>. <laughs> You can see that on <laughs> what channel? It's on USA or some cable channel. Um, 10 o'clock in the morning. TNT. I think TNT? it's on TNT. I don't know. USA, TNT, somebody. One of those. It's a fun show. <laughs> right. One of my favorites. And uh, certainly uh, it, it almost seemed to symbolize the, the uh, uh, really silly sitcom concept. This I mean, is true. Even it's even more, even more an idiot sitcom. Right. Even more than Mr. Red or... Uh, or bewitched. I mean, it truly was uh, it's just a completely ludicrous concept. I mean, you got a reporter. He's he's young. He's ambitious. He has the hottest possible stories. He knows he's, he knows a Martian. He's got the evidence. No, he doesn't even bother telling anybody because no. he's his buddy. <laughs> he, he he just feels <laughs> that he can't because who would believe him? You know, it's that's right. Well, I think journalists were different in those days. <laughs> but, he, but even so, I mean, no, they had on. they had something like scruples or something. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Scruples? <laughs> what are those? Journalistic scruples. <laughs> My goodness, sounds like a breakfast cereal, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but along that same time is when he also popped up on Dobie Gillis. Yeah, well, a little. It was a little I've, I've caught a that. couple of. Uh, uh, a couple of shows. Well, during that time, he was on a lot of stuff. I'm sure, because uh, he did Twilight Zone, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah everybody yeah. Hey, yeah. Everybody did Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone, he was on <laughs> in 1963. In January 1963, the title was The 30 Fathom, Fathom Grave, Grave. Mm -hmm. and he played the Officer of the Day. <laughs> Ooh, and the more exciting part you couldn't have. Yeah, it was a speaking role, come on. <laughs> oh, well, okay, well. Yeah, I, I think you're not a, a true... Uh, True actor of the 60s, 70s. No. If you didn't do zone. I know. I mean, you got either have a zone, zone or zone or gallery, pretty much. Gallery. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you've got to outer have limits, outer limits. You've got to have something like that, or even Alfred Hitchcock. That's in right. Your credits Any in one of the three, or maybe all of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or all of them. Yeah. If you've done all of them, oh. you, you get a gold statue of something. I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't made that part up yet. <laughs> okay, and. Um, so he did the zone, he did the Dobie Gillis in about 63. That's when my favorite Martian hit and ran until 66. And he took some time off <laughs> between series. And then we got one of my real favorites after my favorite Martian in 69, the courtship of Eddie's father. Oh, Eddie's yeah. Eddie's father. Which, which <laughs> I almost think is like the first warmity. Uh, it's real close. It's real close. Yeah. I mean, it was touching. Uh, it was a favorite of mine, really. It's it this had a charming cast and. Gee, Dad, if you ever get married again, <laughs> you have to get dressed up and stuff. Or could I be just like I am? Yeah, <laughs> just like you, you are. are. Boy, that's a relief. He's my best friend. He had a cool music. Who did that? Uh, Harry, Harry Nilsson? Or? Yeah, there you go. Did Harry Nilsson do it? Or yeah, Nilsson? it was right. like cool music. People let me tell you about my best friend. He's a warm-hearted person who loves me till the that, end. That's a, show. <laughs> <laughs> that's a show I'd like to see a reunion of. Oh, yeah. Well, there was one. Uh, there was one at least being produced or being written. And I, and, uh, I mentioned this on an earlier show about the fact that uh, they have they were supposed to do one. And, and uh, I had... I saw in some talk show Brandon Cruz saying, oh, yeah, it's being done. Yeah, I mean, they were like in production of it. And it's been shelved somewhere. Oh, that's too bad. Because I really <laughs> Maybe thought that just at was... home. They're on home. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, there we are. <laughs> I thought you were like... <laughs> Uncle Norman. <laughs> I would love to have Mrs. Livingston working for me. Wasn't she like the best housekeeper? Sure. 
<laughs> Housekeepers Hall of Fame. Oh yeah. This is like right there next to Hazel. Yeah. Right. Mr. and Mr. French, pretty much. You know, I think I think his role as Tom, Rosa. as Tom Corbin on the show. <laughs> yeah. I think that role kind of uh, it was a real positive fatherhood role. Mm -hmm. You know, he wasn't a scatterbrained, goofy father. Right. But he was, he was a real solid man. But he was still the swinging kind of bachelor guy. Well, it was but a not, boy always trying yeah. to fix him. Well, but, yeah, but see, it was still the, yeah, you know, it was a very toned down version of that, but he was still like, hey, you know, hey. Well, the hey, hey, you know, hey guy, well, that was, yeah. that was Uncle that Norman. Was Uncle yeah. Because yeah, <laughs> he was the, yeah. hey. <laughs> hey. He was yeah. like, what, a photographer for <laughs> yeah. the uh, magazine and. Yeah, he was That's a right. He was a photographer. Tina yeah. was the uh, secretary. secretary. But, uh, always wearing the mod Eddie outfits. He was always out there trying to find a new ma for his somebody to marry his dad. <laughs> oh my! Go to stores and hang out in the frozen food aisle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you know it was he wasn't a, a goofy kind of single parent. No, he was. There was there was really a, a decent shot. I mean, I guess it was about the same time what Julia was on or something yeah, like that. Yeah, you know, Tom and Julia should have got together. <laughs> Wow, you see, you have Corey and uh, Earl J. And Wagador. <laughs> and Corey and Eddie would pretty much, you know. <laughs> yeah, and then, then you'd have the first interracial uh, marriage Which deal that would have been. Just now being done. Right, Fox. yeah. <laughs> right. It could have been years before. It could have been an innovator. But, <laughs> but, but in a way, could, it kind of was. Because I really think it paved the way for the idea of the warmity. Yeah, the, because the it was happy always like, comedy, ah. the, but it wasn't, you know, kind of thing. But it really, I mean, it really, in a way, went back to the old shows, the old standards of, uh, of um, make make room make, for dad. Well, even and even before that, more of a more of an Ozzy and Harriet thing of a, but it was a single parent, but it was still the whole idea of, you know, well, everything's lovely and everything works out, and and there's never really any big problems, you know. <laughs> No, just finding somebody for dad to sleep right. with. <laughs> yeah, that, that was about it. <laughs> Except they never said that. Right? Yeah, yeah. No. Eddie's, it's like Eddie's whole purpose. Somebody to come you. over. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, come, come over for over. dinner. <laughs> and also an early appearance of Jodie Foster on that show. Yeah, she had a kind of a regular reoccurring. She was Joey. Yeah. She was a little girl that used to slug Eddie all the time. Because mm -hmm. she liked him. Because she and, liked him. And always, of course, uh, they'd always, Eddie would always go over to Joey's apartment because... You know, it's like, hey, the, the girlfriend's coming over. Got to, well, how do we get, uh, how do we get Eddie out of the house? You know, <laughs> go see Joey, <laughs> little girl down the lane. <laughs> <laughs> he can come back about an hour. <laughs> well, you can say it was surely, it was surely a step up for Bill from my favorite Martian. Oh yeah. His father. Oh yeah. It, it was a, a better show. I, I kept Though expecting I to see Martian Uncle Martian, Uncle Martin, uh, pop in there somewhere. <laughs> always, I was always waiting to see him pop in. You know. Just, just kind of pop in. <laughs> Tim? Tim, changed your name. Tom thought you'd get yeah. away from me. <laughs> yeah. Change your name, huh? No, it won't work. Uh, <laughs> well, let's see. If, if uh, Tim O'Hara had just gotten married right after the series, and uh, well, you could you could but almost figure it out that it would... Relocation witness program kind well, of Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, they never showed the, the final episode where... <laughs> Well, they finally found out about uh, Uncle Martin and uh, <laughs> said, "Well, uh, you know, we're going to have to, have to well, separate Uncle you Martin two. And didn't leave. Well, it was never seen, of course. <laughs> no, Uncle Martin fixed his ship and was able to leave, but he didn't leave. Mm. It was a touching moment. Still studying those darn Earthlings, you know. <laughs> silly Earthlings. Well, no, he, he was a friend. You know, know. he considered <laughs> Tim his friend. And... Okay, I've watched the show a lot. <laughs> All right. Who was that that was always baking brownies? And the yeah. lady downstairs. Mrs. Brown. Mrs. Brown. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Made the brownies. That makes, makes sense. sense. <laughs> it all fits in there. Well, let's move on then. He did um, The Magician. And, uh, there you go. 73 to 74. Neat show. Oh, yeah. Bill Bixby's actually an amateur magician himself. Yes, and that's, that's what and that, made that the show. And that would take place at the Magic Castle. Yes. Yes, quite a bit of it did. Which mm -hmm. I thought I was real amazed by that place. That was, that was neat to see that. Did he like travel around in that one? He had his own 747 or something. Did he? Is that? Or it's his private jet. He had a private jet, but and he had a and, uh, and a he had a really car. cool car. Yeah. And they showed her, that was in the that was in the title well, sequence. Spent, and, wasn't the premise of that show? He spent time in prison for, for a, a crime, crime he, he did not commit. commit. <laughs> okay. And I know every one of those guys in prison. I know y'all didn't do it. I know you didn't do right. it. <laughs> If not, how could you have all these fine shows with people who had crimes they did not commit? Right, 
Right. But, uh, no one ever commits these crimes. <laughs> Not the stars. Not the stars, at least. Yeah. <laughs> the bad guys do. But I think I mainly watch that show, though, for the magic, the illusion. Right. And he'd always, you know, like, hey, uh, you know, the bad guys would have him cornered somewhere, and it's like, hey, look, there just happens to be a magic box over here or something. It's like, I just happen to be on a stage or some sort of deal, and I'm uh, running over there. I'm in. Hey, we got him now. Let's go get him. Where'd he go? <laughs> it's a rabbit! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And the bad guys applaud, drop their guns, and he can run away. All right, they, you got to drop your gun to applaud. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was really wonderful. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> a deck of cards. <laughs> I'm Marshall Brodine, from Mission Professional Magician. <laughs> you can do these cards at home. Oh. In your own time. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, but he did his own magic. He did. He, he really did. His own did. illusion. And it's that's. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, another, hey. no stand in. actor, director, illusion. magician. Directing, <laughs> yeah, he did a lot of directing. Yeah, there's in this there's time. a whole big thing about directing. I mean, he's he's big on that. Um, well, we won't, we go on here, and in, and indeed it does say that he was in the 1974-75 version of okay, Masquerade he wasn't Party, in the early one? not on the early okay, one. Okay, I misread that then. So uh, whip me. <laughs> we don't want to get anything wrong here. Well, after the magician. All the people. Uh, <laughs> Well, maybe somebody will write us a letter that you were wrong. Hey, yeah. be mail. <laughs> we won't beg for it. We'll just screw up, and you can write us and complain. <laughs> <laughs> then we can come on the show and say we got a letter. Well, that was 74, 75 for that masquerade party. Then in 76, he was in um, the rich man, poor man deal. 12-hour novel for TV. The first. Yeah, I one. believe it was the first novel. Right, the first but, novel. But, but Roots kind of overshadowed the whole thing. Yeah, Roots was like it hadn't right been for on that, his feet. Right, if it hadn't right been here. for that, Rich Man, Poor Man would have been like the big tra trail setter or whatever. And Bill Bixby trail played maker, Willie Abbott called. in that. Yeah, not that we know exactly what that who that yeah, character was I or anything. Think that he must have been a major long. character because he was fairly far up in the, in the cast list. Yeah, and plus I never saw Rich Man, Poor Man. It was either above my head, which was probably... Probably well, the still only, is. only person I know I've ever heard about really that people always talk about on Rich Man Poor Man was the character that um, Nick Nolte played. I think he was in that or something. Well, anyway, we, well we have one here. This is this is really obscure. Uh, Bill did a uh, did a pilot for a uh, sitcom which obviously didn't make it. The Natural Look. This was on this was this aired July 6, 1977. <laughs> the misadventures that befall the newlywed Harrisons, Bud, played by Bill, a doctor, and Edie, played by Barbara Feldman, a cosmetics executive. The pilot depicts Edie's marriage, e Edie's feelings, as she prepares to meet Bud's ex-flame, a glamorous girl, played by Karen Kay, who exhibits a domestic flair she feels she can't match. Ooh. Now, oh, why didn't... This was 1977? Now, and this was NBC. <laughs> and, boy, why didn't this make a series? Boy, this is such, sounds like such a, a rich concept that you could just go on for years with. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> but the man didn't rest. That's the point. That's the right. The man didn't rest. That's he went right, right on from he there. He went right on. But, his but all, all, uh, the thing is, all through the 70s, he was doing directing all over the place. I see a, a show here called Spencer's Pilots he directed. Uh, this was in 76. Uh, I've got, uh, let's see, some references for, um, uh, well, there's Incredible Hulk, but that's not what we're talking about here for the second. At least not yet. We'll not yet. Into it. That's right. Um, <coughs> let's see, Operation Runaway, the Oregon Trail. Well, anyways, um, uh, the, the point is, he did lots of shows, because uh, obviously things weren't working out very well for him, and and so he said, "Oh, what the heck! I'll go do some uh, do some directing." And well, it's not he obviously did the, very well. Uh, the acting thing wasn't working right. out. Right. He wanted to branch out from that, as many oh, yeah, actors that's, do. They yes. they want to branch out from the acting. They want to get behind the camera. They want to they want <laughs> to get some other people. But he had the experience to do it. Yes, this is true. I mean, look, the man started out in the in the early days. In the early days of Back TV. In the early days. <laughs> oh yeah. Truly, yeah. the the actor of the sixties right. and the seventies. <laughs> Couldn't turn on that TV. What? There's like maybe a couple of years in here where you could turn on the TV and not see Bill Bixby. At least not in a current thing. But you did get those get reruns. Yes. That syndication. Hey. This once again proves that Bill Bixby is the hardest working man <laughs> in 60s and 70s TV. <laughs> but anyways, uh, he was he was on lots of shows. I'm I'm looking for another uh, reference here. Well, we uh, ought to move into the best known. I That's suppose. The one that that people probably know him the best from. Well, the younger people now, the Incredible Hulk. Bill Bixby played uh, David Bruce Banner, doing the wonderful uh, 
Originally called Metamorphosis Bruce, into Lou Ferrigno. <laughs> originally called Bruce Banner. Yeah. Just yeah. Bruce Banner, as he was called in, in the comic in book. In the comic, right. But, but at the time, it was felt by the network that it was too uh, feminine a name. Ooh. So they, so they named him. All you Bruce's out there, get upset. Right well, uh, yeah, feel free to get upset because this is what the network felt, what CBS felt. Oh, that's, that's too feminine a name. So, so they yeah, slapped I David in front of it. my girl Bruce. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, see, that doesn't make any sense, but... But the, the, the thing was, uh, I, I, I remember seeing um, a mad parody of Incredible Hulk, and just as they were, as they were explaining this, they had a, like a commercial in the background saying, and here's Bruce Jenner, Olympic athlete. For, <laughs> yeah. You know, it was like, it just shows you what, how silly the network is on things like this. Anyways, so... Um, Incredible Hulk ran from 78 to 82. Certainly, was that mm, close to his longest running series, I think? Just about, Just yeah. About. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, with well, the one, as far as ones he started. And um, yeah, he was. Uh, I mean, still today, I think that's what most people identify him with. Yeah. That part is David Bruce Banner. Right. <laughs> well, hey, only because of the fact that that, that darn show doesn't die. Right. That's <laughs> it's right. It's still, still on. It's still going on. the Incredible Hulk and the damn thing's not dead, dead yet. yet. We've just it's like found out. The trial of the Incredible Hulk. Okay, the is, return of the Incredible now, Hulk. Now, doesn't Bill Bixby write? Oh, I'm Hulk sure he now? does now. Oh yeah. A producer. Oh yeah, I'm sure something. he. I'm sure he produces it because he's not on camera all that much. <laughs> it's like, do do do. Ooh ooh, I'm getting. Uh, and then he's done. <laughs> then oh, I'm so all the action, the all action sequences. He's not even there. He could be behind the camera. <laughs> Don't make me angry. angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. <laughs> the eyes go wide, and then you know there's something Why wrong. Is it neat? <laughs> <laughs> he starts question. busting his seams. Yeah, there's the question: Is how much does this guy spend on clothing? Yikes! That's really? That's what I always wondered. That's that's something I always wondered. Here, here he is. He's traveling around the country. Yeah. Basically, he's living a out of a person. A, like a living out of a roll bag. Yeah, he's yeah. got a duffel bag <laughs> with lots of clothing in it. <laughs> Where does he get the money to buy all the clothes and? And a couple of times you notice he, no matter what, this is, and this is a thing that's also in the comic book, is no matter what David is wearing, in, and when he turns into Incredible Hulk, Hulk, Incredible Hulk is always wearing jeans. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what, it's just like, it turns him green and it changes his pants into jeans. <laughs> that's from polyester yeah. into jeans. Yeah. Well, no what it's doing. all in the jeans, yeah. I guess, basically. Well, that's that's right. Right. <laughs> Incredible science is amazing. That's right. That radiation, this, by golly! But this uh, this show is one of the, uh, unlike a lot of shows like uh, the superhero shows, number one he couldn't control what was going on, obviously, and two it was this very introspective kind of thing, kind of like the stuff we're seeing now on Beauty and the Beast, kind of, because it had this nice do 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 this nice piano theme, and it was you know it's like the tragic. You know, gothic yeah. story of this guy who turns into a green hulk. I always got the feeling of incredible sadness from this show. Because mm -hmm. oh, yeah, he could never stop, although he should have, because he was never going to get fixed unless he stopped and stopped at uh, some decent scientific facility and let him and let him work on him for a while and of hide him out. If he stopped, the reporter was going to find him. Yeah. Yeah. The reporter, or whatever his name was, reporter, but he Don't went, play to, the, with gamma he went to the Marriott Hartley Institute a few times. Yeah, there, and <laughs> she she about fixed him up, and then just in time. Oh no 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 no! <laughs> and he, just just when everything's working out, ooh, that darn Hulk comes out and smashes Bam. the machine. So he has to wander around the country again so she can make another machine right. to help him out. <laughs> She always found him, too, or he always found her one way or the other. It's like, well, I'll go back and give her another try. And sure enough, she's got another machine there, one of those degamma machines. Yeah, <laughs> degamma, the degamma machines, the degammerization. Degamma. <laughs> it seems like the roles he's had have gotten more serious. Well, it's except, like except Tim for... Tim <laughs> O'Hara was like a doofus, okay? <laughs> well, he was pretty goofy. Well, except for his next show, this, this, the very short-lived... The Book of Lists. Remember the Book of Lists yeah, series? Uh, the series of books they and it was just lists and lists and lists and lists and lists now all that's over the place. Yeah. Yeah. And it and it was so it was like a kind of like I don't know almost like a candid camera uh, real people kind of show where it was like here's another list da -da -da -da. <laughs> and, and and Bill would read a list or or co-host it was like. Uh, Steve Allen was a co-host, and you know, it was just like, and here's this list, da, da, da. and it was like a half-hour list, and of course, 
This lasted for a long time, all of like four weeks, I think. Yeah. <laughs> People said, ooh, this is exciting. I'll go buy the book, thanks. <laughs> the book was pretty popular. I still have my first copy. I think I do, too, somewhere. But uh, this, this is just not something that worked as a television show. It's worked for David Letterman, though, having lists on the show. The, top, but the beginning of the top ten lists. <laughs> yeah, but like look, how, look how long it took him to hit back upon that idea to do mm -hmm. lists. Or it took somebody to hit back upon the idea of doing lists. I mean, since it was, it was how many years there? We're looking at almost 10 years. Right. Well, I can't say really 10, maybe a good six years, though. That's right. <laughs> well, we I know wasn't we, counting. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> then we move on to um, his, uh, his last big role, other than, the, uh, than uh, the Incredible Hulk stuff, which is still going on. Good Night, Beantown. And this was uh, team teamed him up again with Marriott Hartley to the By point golly. that everybody was convinced they were married. I think in real life. Yeah. Although they weren't, were they? No. They were never were, and yet everybody was convinced they were. But then that Marriott Hartley, I mean, you, they just linked her up with everybody. James, James Garner, Garner, James Garner, James Garner, Garner uh, uh, Leonard Nimoy, Nimoy <laughs> in the Star Trek episode. But <laughs> that Marriott Hartley, by golly. Good night, Bean Town was all right. It was okay. It was on for what? It was I think on it's for a still while. on syndication. Somewhere, probably I, at Lifetime or somebody picked it picked up. Someone picked it up for or at one time. They've had it. Mm. Yeah, it just ran originally for like a year, but hey, you know. It, was it actually okay. was. It wasn't too bad a show, really. I mean, it was just like they were trying to do kind of a well, it's another news show within a show kind of thing, like like Mary Tyler Moore show, yeah. where they just uh, uh, it was this uh, guy and he's a uh, respected anchor in Boston and and this new woman co-anchor moves in who just happens to move into the same apartment building he moved he lives in what a coincidence so, it makes so, things convenient for them yeah <laughs> <laughs> and, driving across town <laughs> and so they yeah and so they, and so they had you know it was like the witty banter kind of stuff like cheers which of course was based in the same city i was amazed if, i guess if it had been on the same network it was on CBS. I, I suppose eventually they would have had him dropping it on Cheers, like, uh, Cheers like. Is, Cheers wasn't on CBS. That's what I mean. If it had been on oh, the same it had network, been, okay. Like uh, St. Elsewhere St. dropped Elsewhere, it on yeah. Cheers, because they're all in the same town. So. Um, well, you can definitely say though, from 1962 until 1982, 20 solid years of TV. And, sh and I'm sure they're. And there's... have you noticed Bill Bixby still looks? Kind of the same. I mean, he doesn't really age. Ooh, another Ooh. one of the. I mean, he, he's mature. <laughs> it's scary. But he has the really Dick Clark <laughs> school of non-aging. Hey, I think I think Bill's got <clears throat> Dick Clark beat pretty much. Cause look, we were seeing Dick Clark the other night, and he's getting that crevice of a part in his hair. Well, that's true. Yeah. His Bill Bixby is still a back. sharp looking guy. <laughs> but, hey, we don't know if Bill's wearing a wig or not. You know, it's a good one if it is. It's like you could sneak into that dressing room and see Bill ball as billiard ball or something. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, if you have there we go. Stretching up, <laughs> running up yeah. those, uh, those crow's feet, you know, uh -huh. those well, no, he, he's, he hasn't, I'm not saying he has not aged at all. He's aging gracefully. Yes, that's Bears the word. very gracefully. He, he's, There's yeah, the term. He's, he's still very handsome man, a very handsome man. So surely somewhere, uh, somebody's working on another pilot for him because those, those Incredible Hulk things aren't coming all that well, they're doing them like between. one every oh, year and a half. Well, Which, no, about one every year. Which, and you really don't take a year to do one of these episodes. I mean, well, no, he's, I'm sure he's, he's doing some other, he's, he's investing heavily in the stock market or yeah. something, you know. <laughs> yeah. He's probably still directing, right? Well, yeah. yeah. But we but we want to see him on another series, I think. Yeah, we do. <laughs> it's I, about I time. It's Bill a 90, and it's time for another Bill Bixby series. Or yeah. even a, um, a reunion show. I mean, you've got enough here to choose from, Bill. Oh, yeah. We don't need any more Hulk, though. <laughs> no. Yeah, we're, oh, the, yeah. Hulk, the Hulk it's will fun, keep but going, it's, yeah, you know? But, yeah, we don't really need that. No, we need a big... We a big don't and, need um, another hero. We got uh, incredible, uh, I mean, uh, favorite Martian, a big favorite Martian reunion. Yeah. And that's yeah. amazing because Ray Walston's still around. And he's oh, getting he more crotchety in there <laughs> as the years go on. He better do that sooner or else yeah. he won't want to regret that Martian again. bitchy Uncle Martin <laughs> yeah. now. What do you want, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> go away. <laughs> but, 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 get ready. This is the Bill show. <laughs> <laughs> this is Bill's show. <laughs> Uncle Martin, where are you? I'm invisible. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> the entire show without Yeah, really. It's like there's something. Yeah, you do a reunion show, except that uh, Uncle Martin's invisible the whole time. Something's on the fritz. You bump into and him. You, you just Lay out, you. <laughs> Can't you see me? I'm invisible. <laughs> this is somebody doing a really good. I'm only invisible. Can't you see me? <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. That'd be about well. as much humor as any old series. I mean, they, they, they milked the invisibility thing for a long time. Yeah, well, it was a lot <laughs> of fun. Well, gee, I think we should all thank Bill. Oh, yeah. For being stable, for, for adding stability to our lives, if anything else. That's right. He's been there for us for years, and I'm sure he'll be with us. Yeah, many, 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 the many, viewing, many, audience, many the viewing audience has always been there for him, too. I That's mean, right. Yeah. Very popular. Because, I mean, any channel you'd turn to, there'd be Bill Bixby, the hardest working man <laughs> in 60s and 70s TV. Well, anyways, we're given the signal to get out of here, so uh, for all get of us here at Vast Wasteland, out. we'll see you in three...